Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Yeah, we're not so bad uh, today either. Yeah, we're all right. We're in there 1103, Yeah, it's pretty typically. good. It's a, yes. a it's good day to be in God's house. Kind of a slow day, isn't yeah. it? That's a, but it's a good day to be here. Good to see everybody. I don't know how I got my, got we, my camera on there. It's, oh, you did? I was trying to get to time. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, we got some people back with us who've been sick. We're glad about that. And Absolutely. Everybody's in yeah, good. Yeah, got a whole row there, man. They, they've yeah, been I know. Through it. They've been through yeah, a lot. Yeah, we're so glad. Praise Jamie, the Lord. Jamie and Lisa. Take care of them. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're back in here. Yeah. Well, yeah they've, we've, had, uh, they've had a lot of. Boy, it's been a time for some people. Bumps along the road. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's been tough. And so good to see so many people here today. Amen. And uh, still going through a lot. But anyway, everything going all right with you? Yeah, it's good. Week yeah, oh, yeah. It's all, all yeah. good. Well, the Lord another, is good. Yeah. Another yeah. what often falls and but never gets hurt. Uh, what's that? The rain. The rain, yeah. I tell you, we've had a bunch yeah. of it. Yeah. Well, I tell you, I know yeah. it. But that, have y'all yeah. noticed all that rain? Yeah. 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 I tell you, often. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, man, we've had a bunch of it. We've had plenty well, of rain. Man, I tell you, it's all over. Yeah, how right. hot was it? No, I mean, no, oh. How hot was it? I don't oh. know. Uh, I missed the cue card. The, the, no, the, it's not. The cows were given evaporated milk. Oh. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know, but anyway. That's pretty good. But anyway, going on. <laughs> but talking about this weather, it's uh, it's all over the yeah. world. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, know, you, you know, you surf the old TV and saw this channel in Mexico. Yeah. Given the weather. Yeah. Is it chilly today and hot tamale? Chilly today and hot tamale. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. You ever hear of tamale pie? No. Why? Does Mary sort make like that? Carrot, sort of like carrot cake, John. It just doesn't go together, right? <laughs> tamale pie. Has anybody ever had that before? <laughs> Mary, Mary uh, offered me some tamale pie once. Yeah, yeah. You turned it down, I hope. Yeah, well, I, I wasn't sure what it was. Yeah. Sort of like carrot cake, it's John says. Not sure if it's a dessert or what Yeah, what I know, is, right? yeah. Carrots and cake. All right. Anyway, good to see everybody, and hope you're glad. I hope mean, that's it today. That's all you got. Well, I, I thought you just say you're not saying much. So I yeah, I know. Well, I, I didn't know what. To, no, I didn't have anything to say. I just <laughs> wonder. I mean, remember, I'm the straight guy. I'm just waiting on you. I'm just uh, all I'm doing is waiting on you to oh, do. Uh, all right. But so I thought we had a couple of birthdays. Well, I'm sure we did um, this crowd coming up, but I can't. Uh, I forget who it was. Did Tom have one? Good. All right, hey, Tom. Tom had a birthday. Right. I thought we did. Debbie Everso had a birthday. Yeah, Debbie. Pam Pearl. We got Pam. a little one here. We got a little one here. Now, what, what's her name? London. All right, London. London had a birthday. Did you have a birthday? Happy birthday. Happy, yeah, birthday. there What's we go. Name? Lauren. Lauren's got a what? birthday up here. All right. Sherry. Lots. Sherry, birthday. Man, we got a bunch of them. Yeah. Hey, her and her mom has the same birthday. Wow. Yeah. She's, She's a little younger, old. but they're, they're the same birthday. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. Yeah. All right. It's a, other? What's your message today? Uh, today, some reminders. Some reminders, yeah. Maybe gentle. You, you've heard that phrase, a, a gentle reminder. Is this some gentle reminders today of some things that we need right. to we we need to think about and know that hey, it's all good, everything's good. Good deal. Good deal. Need, all right. All Hope right. you got a list because you might forget them between now and the time we start. There's only three of them, and I know what they are. Okay, only yeah. three points. Today. Only three points today. All right. Well, let's stand as we begin the service. Is that all right? Standing on the promise. Amen. Right? Yeah, there we go. Here we go. Everybody sing. Standing on the promises of Christ, my King. Sing it. Through eternal ages, let His praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. On the now. 
standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises I cannot fail. When the howling storms are down and fear assail, by the living word of God I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God. Here we go now. Father, we thank you so much for your promises. We thank you, Father, for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ and our salvation through him. And Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to come and worship together. And we thank you for those who are coming back in who've been sick and things going on in their lives. And uh, Lord, we just thank you that they're here and that we're all uh, here to worship the Lord Jesus Christ together. And I pray, Father, you just bless this service today in a very special way. And let it encourage us and, and equip us and draw us closer and make us more like the Lord Jesus. And Father, we pray for the needs of people. We have so many who are sick and we have so many who have, uh, they're waiting on surgeries or tests or, or, or uh, treatments. And Lord, I just ask that you be with them. And provide everything they need. And there may be someone here this morning that's not saved. They don't know Christ as their Savior. There may be someone watching the program that's not saved. And we pray this would be the day they give their lives to Christ. And Father, we know that the signs look like the Lord Jesus could come back soon. And we welcome him, but we know there's people who need to be ready uh, lest they be left behind. And so I pray, Father, we would be the kind of disciples we ought to be out there uh, bringing people to the Lord Jesus and making more disciples. Uh, Father, just keep us in your will. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today and let us worship in spirit and in truth and let Jesus be lifted up in everything we do. We pray in his name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Adorned and ready to appear. 
Since your mind 
long through How long has it been since you woke with the dawn and fell that the days were living Can you call him your friend How long has it been since you knew that he cared for you Can you some quick announcements today at the end of the service as you leave we'll be uh, collecting an offering for the youth if you'd like to help with our youth program and all that they're they're uh, doing and trying to do uh, just uh, we'll have a uh, someone there or a box or something uh, for your offering for the youth tonight and and I didn't get the word out where is Johnny Where's Johnny at? Johnny, I need to start sending these to you right away because I forget. But I, uh, we're going to cancel our um, um, picnic tonight. I'm so sorry. I know many of you didn't hear it, uh, didn't see it on Facebook where I put it. But I am so sorry. Uh, but again, it's just one of those things I feel like it's the best thing to do for your safety. Um, and so... Um, I hope you'll get over the anger before the message or before you leave church and not take it out on, on people. Uh, I've already got Jim Farrell's strawberry pies. Um, he's, he said he'd give one to Hagerman and, and one to me. He had them made up, but no, he didn't really. He just had the strawberries. I, and I caught Marlene in time before she had made her stuff. And so uh, I, I know it's an inconvenient thing, but... Uh, again, these are things just trying to be uh, careful, safe, and look out for your well-being. And hopefully we'll get everything going soon, back to normal, and get to do everything that we want to do, where and how we want to do it. Amen? amen. Boy, that wasn't much of an amen. Yeah. Uh, right um, and then we're... Um, the county camp meeting, we're still, Menifee County Camp meeting, we're waiting to see how things go. Uh, September 17 is the fundraiser for Horizons of Hope. That is still on at least at this moment. Uh, so pray about that. Our quarterly business meeting is coming up Sunday night, September 19, 8 p.m. or right after the evening service. That should be 7 p.m. I left the same thing in there, 7 p.m for this quarterly business meeting, and if you'd like to nominate someone for an officer, please give that nomination to one of the deacons, okay? All right, I believe that's all the announcements uh, that I have. We have Children's Church coming up. Children's Is there Church, another? Huh? Like to... No service tonight, no, because we'd already canceled that. We're going to have the picnic, so do something with your family and remember mm -hmm. the Lord Jesus in all this time. You know, we, I want to particularly mention, too, we, we have so many people who are going through a lot of things just in their work. Uh, things like our teachers and, and trying to deal with all of this back and forth. Our health care uh, nurses and, and health care providers. Uh, our utility people uh, like Keith and Brett sent all over the place. Um, to, to help other people. And I, I just want to mention those. And, and we need to be really thankful for all of those people. And, and all the things they do with the virus and the storms and all that kind of stuff. That they really go above and beyond in, in what they do. And, and so just pray for them and, and, uh, and God will bless them and take care of them. All right, thank you. And uh, yeah, so those in the nursery junior church, the one through four, five through 11, they can be dismissed to their class at this time. Yeah, give everybody all those going. All right. Yeah.
Yeah, we've got a good group going. All right, just before the message, uh, another song by request. John chapter 4. This is a familiar passage. Uh, it's familiar for the story of the Samaritan woman who was searching. Uh, she was thirsty. She didn't know exactly, though, what she was thirsting for or who she was thirsting for, and she found Jesus. She went looking for water that and, and was living a life that was not satisfying to her. Um, it wasn't meeting her needs. But she found Jesus, and it, it absolutely changed her life. Symbolically, she left the water pot behind. She forgot about it because it wasn't the water she needed. It was the living water of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so you know that story and how she was... Um, uh, saved gloriously saved and the evidence was she went into town told everybody about meeting Jesus and it says that many believed because of her testimony now that's a sure sign of salvation is when we're so excited about Jesus we'll go tell people about him but I want to read uh, uh, some verses that maybe we don't hardly uh, pay as much attention to as the rest of the story but the woman is talking to Jesus and in verse 19 of John 4 the woman saith unto him sir I, I perceive that thou art a prophet our fathers worshipped in this mountain 
This mountain is uh, Gerizim. Gerizim. This is the mountain where the Samaritans uh, worshipped. And you say that in Jerusalem, that's the place where the Jews worshipped, is the place where men ought to worship. And Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, you know not what. We know that we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And Father we thank you for your word, for its truth, for its power, that it is living and life changing. As we study together, I pray that every word spoken is yours and not mine, and that your will is done in our lives, in our church. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Now, I have, um, I've offered up to you some reminders along the way, uh, starting at the very beginning of when this virus hit and everybody was scared to death. And, and I've been giving you some reminders that, first of all, God is good. Whatever the circumstances are, however things look, whatever storm you're going through, by faith and by the evidence of Scripture and evidence in your life, you need to know and always remember however you feel or however things look, God loves you. Amen. Secondly, is that He is, he is good he loves you. And then the third thing is, he's going to work all things out for good. He's going to work all these together for good, whatever is going on. So those are things I've reminded you all along. God is good. God loves you. And he's working all this, whatever it is, together for good. Those are things you need to remember all the time. And you need to remind yourselves occasionally when you don't feel that God, you, you might think he's forgotten you. He hasn't. He sent his son to die for your sins. He sent his son so that you could be forgiven, and have eternal life. So God is good and he loves you and he's working all these things out together for good. Keep reminding yourselves of those things. But today, because of all the speculation that goes on in days like this when when uh, the the virus in its first and second and what are we in the third wave uh and 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 someone says there's a fourth wave somewhere along the way well whatever it is with the virus going on and with the storms i mean how many storms can we have and all of that's going on there's a lot of speculation and so uh, I, I, th these are obviously perilous uh, times, and there's just so much being said out there. By th out there, I mean um, internet, Facebook, uh, just people in general, all kinds of things being said, all kinds of advice out there, all kinds of people who know exactly what's going on and all those things. So just a lot of, and, and, and so I thought, with all that, we, we, need to get, we need to do some reminders this morning because there's so much confusion. I love the sign there that Donna put on the, the PowerPoint. Uh, people are puzzled, confused, lost, baffled, unclear, unsure. Remember in Matthew 9, we talk about this all the time. Jesus looking out over the, over the multitude and he saw them, man. They were confused and they were wandering and lost. The worst thing, they were lost. And, and in our world today, there's a lot of people totally, completely confused as to what's going on. And that makes them sometimes, when you're confused and scared, it, it makes you ripe for false doctrine. You, you want to hear, there, there's things you want to hear. And so then you'll believe what you want to hear, and you don't check whether it's truth. You just want to feel better. You want some kind of security, and so you may believe something that's not true just because you, you have fear. And so there's a lot of confusion. 
A lot of opinions. Everybody's got an opinion, right? And then there's so many uh, teachers out there uh, that have the answer. So I mean, I'm not talking about our school teachers. I'm not talking about, you know, your actual, that's your profession, teachers. I'm talking about their, that's what's in quotes, uh, their, their teachers who can tell you everything. And sometimes they might tell you, well, now this is happening because of something you've done. Uh, this happening to you because of a decision you made. And we do make decisions. We do make choices. We do things that do bring consequences into our lives. But just because you have a certain illness, it doesn't mean that you've done something wrong directly related to that. But there's a lot of teachers out there who can tell you uh, all kinds of different things. As a matter of fact, in 2 Timothy 3, 7, I think this is really an appropriate uh, verse uh, for the time that we're in, uh, these perilous times, you know, of all the things. It, it, it's, uh, here's the way we are. We start looking for the Lord Jesus when physical things start happening. All right, when the virus comes, well, the Lord might be, he must be coming back. His judgment's coming. Or when all these storms happen, well, the, the Lord, he, he's coming back. God, all these things that's happening in our in our world he must be coming back well note, notice in second timothy uh, 3 7 these are things uh, 3 1 through 7 these are things are about behavior these perilous times are immoral times these perilous times are godless times and in verse 7 it says ever learning now this fits exactly where we are this morning and what i'm talking about ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. There is so much information out there. We are overloaded with information, but we're not overloaded with truth. And that's the problem. In, in people's fear, in people's confusion, in people's wanting to feel better about things, they will accept things that are not truth. And so we have to be careful with that, and that's why I want to give you some gentle reminders this morning. Uh, only three of these gentle reminders of, of, of things that will help us in these perilous times. And remember, remember our faith, our faith, your faith is tested from time to time. The Bible tells us about that. And, and you will never know if your faith is worth two cents until it's tested. And things like, look in Romans chapter 5. In, in Romans chapter 5, this, this is a great chapter, by the way. Therefore, being justified by faith, we are saved. Our sins are forgiven. We are saved by our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Now listen, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. You see that? That's King James Bible right there. Huh? Amen. Amen. And I bet any of your other translations is pretty close to that. We glory. It says we glory in these tribulations. What in the world? It says knowing that tribulation or testing worketh patience or perseverance. These testings, these trials, these tribulations we go through, they build our faith. They build our patience. They build our, build our perseverance in that. We don't bail out on God. We don't get mad at God. We're learning. He's working in our lives, and so we have patience. We wait. The Bible says in Psalm 27, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And so we, we learn to have patience. We learn to, to persevere, to endure, because we know, according to 1 Peter 1, that the trying of our faith is more precious than gold. That's what it means to the Lord Jesus Christ. It, it's precious. You know, the Bible presents things in a whole different light 
than we see them. Uh, it, it, it's like, in, you, you've heard us use this verse, especially at funerals, precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his saints. Because he wants his, like we want our children to come home, he wants his children to come home. And so it's precious to him when his children come home. Well, you're, the trying of your faith, the testing of your faith is also precious to him. He wants you to be more like Him, more like the Lord Jesus. And it takes testing. It takes trials. It takes perseverance to make us like the Lord Jesus Christ. And so these things, are they may seem not so good to us, but they're precious to the Lord. And so we have to wait on Him as He works in and on and through us. And so these reminders, just I'm going to give you these three and then we'll go through them. One is how we worship is more important than where we worship. The COVID-19 vaccination is not, not, not the mark of the beast. And then number three, you need a biblical worldview instead of just a world view. Now, these are three reminders that are very, very important to us because we're the church out there, and, and we're, we're leaving some kind of impression, good or bad, we're leaving some kind of impression as to how we handle things like the virus, perilous times, things going on in our world. As people watch us, how are we handling these things? It leaves an impression. And we're supposed to leave an impression that is good and that honors the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. And so first of all, how we worship is more important than where we worship. The the lady in our text, the Samaritan woman in our text, she's saying, well, our fathers say worship in this mountain, Mount Gerizim. And that's where the Samaritans Worship. That's where they built a temple. They only believed in the Pentateuch, the five uh, 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 first chapter, the, the first five books of the of the Old Testament. They only believed in that, and the Jews and the Samaritans were were enemies, total, complete enemies. And and then the Jews said, "Well, no, you worship in Jerusalem," and and then Jesus said, "Well, the hour is coming, the day is coming, where your worship is not in uh, about this mountain." Or Jerusalem. But it's about who you worship, not where you worship. It's how you worship, not where you worship. So Jesus taught her and us that our genuine worship is about a person, not a place. We're to worship, you look, whether we worship here in the gym. Or over in the church. I want to be in the church. I just haven't felt it's right yet. But whether it's here or there, what difference does it make? I mean, we're worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Now, one thing, do not pull on me. Do not pull on me that you say, well, then I can just worship at home. Even after, even after the COVID, even though everything's clear, I can just worship at home. Jesus loves His church. And the Bible says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. That kind of rules that out. I'd say you need to deal with the how if that's how you feel about it, right? All right. Now, I'm not talking about those who are under some kind of risk that you need just to be careful during this time. You already know those kinds of things because you know me better than that but where we worship is not important it's 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 who and how we worship now we're worshiping a person we're worshiping a person not a place but it's how we worship that's also important the who is above all things most important Jesus but how do we worship 
Jesus said, he taught there, that we're to worship in spirit and in truth. So how we worship matters. That has nothing to do with your singing or your praying or those things. It is, it, it's our heart. It's spirit and in truth. Now, first of all, you, you can't worship. I mean, you can praise the Lord and you can say God is good and you can thank Him. But you can't worship if you're not saved. You, how, how can you worship when you're rejecting Jesus Christ. You, you, you can't worship. Plus, you're not worship, you can't worship the Father if He's not your Father. And He's not your Father if Jesus isn't your Savior. Are you getting all this? So it's how we worship in spirit and in truth. When we get saved, then the Bible says that, that the Spirit, Holy Spirit... Bears witness with our spirit that we're children of God. The Bible says when we're born again, our, our spirit, our soul, our person, we're born again. And we can worship in spirit. And then the truth of it is, is, is truth that's in our, according to Scripture, and it's in our hearts and lives. I mean, we can't come in. How can you worship? It doesn't matter if you're over in the church, if you're here. If your heart's not right, you can't worship right. You just can't. And so we need to be, do you ever hear anything uh, 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 called this anticipation? You ever heard what that word is? You ever heard the word used, anticipation? The first... There used to be the old Heinz ketchup commercial, right? And anticipating it coming out. And if you don't use Heinz, by the way, you do need to get saved. But, but uh, 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 that's just, that's in the Bible. <laughs> well, maybe it's not. But remember that commercial, it had come out real slow in the anticipation. Let me ask you this. Do you anticipate coming to worship the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. See, that's an important part of it, that you are, you're anxious to come and worship the Lord Jesus Christ. You're anxious to see one another. You're excited about hearing the word. You're excited about the songs that are going to be sung. You're excited about the feeling that you're going to have while you're here. That's anticipation. You, you can't come dragging in here and, 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 and worship the right way. Now, I understand we come in sometimes, we don't feel like being here, but we come because we, we want to feel better. We want to worship. But I'm saying we, we need to come in here anticipating that God is going to bless us in a special way. If you're not coming in here looking for a blessing, you're not going to find one probably. If you're in here mad at the world, you're probably going to leave here mad at the world. But we need to anticipate genuine worship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we have anticipation, you will have preparation. Now, you know when preparation begins... You, you know when your preparation begins? The night before. Now, I'm not talking about getting ready in a hurry and getting in here. I'm talking about the preparation that goes in the night before as you're anticipating coming to worship the Lord Jesus Christ with your brothers and sisters. Amen? Amen. A preparation of having your heart and mind ready that you want to come in and you're excited and prepared to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. When you are genuine and when you're focused and you're focused only on the Lord Jesus Christ, it's not going to bother you that I didn't make it to your seat to shake hands with you. Right? Or it won't matter to you if someone looked grumpy when they talked to you. 
right? Because you're focused on Jesus. You're focused on Him. And the other things fade away because of Him. Amen? Amen. You all know these little things that make noises so people can sleep. You know the little machines, it might have a storm. It might have a, 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 a beach, an ocean, or whatever. I need some of those with amen on them. Just to, <laughs> that like I could just step over here and just it'd be an amen. or uh, Just something like that, just so I know you're right. Or Mary, can you do that music like some, the big preachers, boy, they're out there, they're preaching, and the organ will play. I mean, is that incredible or what? I could get into that. I might really start preaching then. Get some organ music back there. Mary, you need to work on that a little bit. Well, listen. I need to hurry. The mark. I preached this to you in the study on Revelation. I spent a whole sermon on this. If you remember, I told you. This is the way they will handle it, something like this. To where you can't buy or sell, you can't go into places if you don't have your mark. In those days when the beast is here, the Antichrist is here. But I told you in no uncertain terms, this vaccination is not the mark of the beast. Now, I'm not going to preach to to you about whether you take the vaccination or not. I took the vaccination. I think it's the right thing to do. But I'm not going to try to convince you. you. You have the freedom. You make those kinds of decisions. But I'm telling you this. You don't have to fear that you're selling your soul to hell if you take the vaccination. It is not the mark of the beast. Here's why it's not the mark of the beast. Number one, the rapture has not happened. The mark of the beast will come after the rapture. Look around and see all these Christians in here. Surely there's four or five of us who are really saved and wouldn't be here. Surely to goodness. The rapture has not happened. In, in 1 Thessalonians 4, it talks about that the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then those of us who are alive and remain, we, we're going, in 1 Corinthians 15 also, we will be changed and called up to be, to, to be with them and to meet the Lord in the air. The rapture has not happened. Therefore, there is no mark of the beast. And so you can take the vaccination with confidence. Revelation 4 1. In, in Revelation 4 1, it says, After this, John writes, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up here, and I'll show thee things which must be hereafter. There is a picture of the rapture. And then in chapters 4 and 5, there's a picture of the scene in heaven. And then starting in chapter 6, there is no mention of the church because the church is in heaven. The church has been raptured. And during the, the 16 through 19, those chapters, it's about the tribulation on the earth. We're not here during the tribulation. We are there. And so I just want you to feel, this is a gentle reminder. The vaccination, the COVID-19 vaccination is not the mark of the beast. Number two, the Antichrist has not been revealed. How could it be the mark of the beast? We don't even know who the beast is. The Antichrist, we don't don't know. In 2 Thessalonians... Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it says, let no, well, he, he, I'll try to read some of these verses quickly. Verse 2, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled. Hear me? 
don't be shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit, by word, by letter from as from us, as that day of the Lord is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man and that man of sin and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. And the mystery of iniquity, in verse 7, doth already work. Only he who now letteth or restrains uh, holds the Holy Spirit until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume. The, the Antichrist cannot be revealed until we are taken away. We and the influence of the Holy Spirit is taken away. And the world will be in total, absolute chaos. And they will need someone, some uh, a leader, some charismatic leader, a great orator and leader and all of that. And he will then step into place and will lead the world. But not until we're gone. And so the, the rapture has to take place before the, the, the Antichrist can be revealed. And then there will be the mark of the beast. So don't be confused. It also says it's going to be in the forehead. Any, any of you got a vaccination in the forehead? In the hand? Any of you got a vaccination in the hand? Aren't they all in the arm? Well, like I say, I'm not trying to convince you. I just, if I walk in the drugstore and they're giving a shot, I take it. I take the flu shot, pneumonia shot, COVID shot, shingles shot. I, you offer them. I'm taking them, all right? That's, that's just me. Number three, number three. Are you all getting these things? Are you hearing me here? All right. Number three, you need a biblical worldview, not just a worldview, not just a quote-unquote worldview. You need a biblical worldview. Now, what that means is this. Check the Bible first. For answers check the Bible first when issues come up uh, w w when people are talking about the mark of the beast when they're talking about the issues of life check the Bible first a biblical worldview right now people are listening to the world they're listening to, to people just rambling on about stuff and it's like whatever you read is true. Now this may be, this may shake you to your very core. But not everything you read on Facebook is true. <laughs> you, you, you listened to that, didn't you? Let me tell you something else. Not everything you see on TV is true. And not everything that preachers say on TV is true. The Bible is true. Every word of it. You need to check the Bible. When an issue comes up, your first statement should be, what does the Bible say? You need a biblical worldview. And then be willing to accept the truth of the Bible. See, there's a way, the Bible says in, in a Proverbs 16, 25, there's a way that seems right. I mean, it feels right. It looks right. Other people say it's right. But it leads to death. It leads to destruction. There is one way. Jesus. One way. We need to have a biblical worldview. We need to have the courage to have a biblical worldview, there's the answers. There's the answers, and there's the blessings of God. And so today, uh, out of love, out of concern, because I want our church to be out there with the truth. I don't want us to be out there confused and, and bedazzled by somebody that's, that's speaking false doctrine. I, I want us to know that how we worship the Lord Jesus is the most important thing. That we, we, we worship Him honestly, truthfully, uh, with our spirit, with our heart, with our mind. That we worship Him and we focus on Him. I want you to know that this vaccination is not the mark of the beast because there's been no rapture. Therefore, there is no antichrist. 
And we don't have to worry about the tribulation. We will be with Jesus. And then we all need a biblical worldview and the courage to find the answers in the Bible and to obey, to believe what it says. Amen? Amen. Now listen, if you're not saved today, you need to be saved. You need the Lord Jesus Christ. God loves you. He, he gave Christ to die for your sins. If you'd come trusting Him, He will forgive you and save you. You'll be a child of God. Like instantly, you'll be a child of God. And Christians, those of us who are saved, I mean, we need to be a faithful, uh, uh, dedicated, uh, courageous Christian uh, representing the Lord Jesus out there with the truth and with compassion. And so if the Lord is speaking to your heart today, whether to be saved or as a Christian that just needs, to, you, you need to hear from God or you need courage or you have a special request, you come and pray. Just, just come and pray. If you can't get to this low altar, just stand here and pray. Father, we thank you for this, for your word, for this time to study together. And I pray, Father, you give us victory. Victory in Jesus, both as in salvation and as his ambassadors. Uh, Father, as you speak to hearts, please help people to be obedient. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.